I want to commend the leadership of El Paso today, the mayor, uh, the chief of police, uh, the other leaders in this city and, and uh, this area uh, and facing the issue of the rising violence that we see from across the border. Um, the, you got your hands full. Uh, you got your hands full, but you're handling it in an admirable way. Uh, I also want to welcome our federal partners who are here with us today who uh, stand in harm's way. Uh, we're standing here today at a point of convergence between two nations that are dealing with their own uh, crisis. Here in Texas, we're dealing with this growing effects of, uh, of a global financial crisis that's uh, uh, leading to tighter budgets, to increased job losses, to growing sense of uncertainty for our citizens. Uh, those concerns may pale, though, in comparison to our neighbors and the violence in Mexico that's led to more than 5,700 homicides in 2008, roughly 1,600 uh, violent deaths across the bridge in Juarez. In just the first two months of 2009, Juarez has already seen more than 265 brutal homicides. The U.S. State Department estimates there are more than 200 Americans that have been killed in Mexico since 2004. Clearly, the situation in Mexico is dire. It requires our close attention. Mexico's government wages a war, a, a war against a very ruthless enemy within its borders. And today, I want to express our sympathy to our neighbors in Mexico. Uh, we want to express our disgust uh, for the brutal and cowardly tactics of the drug cartels, our support for President Calderon and his efforts to defeat them. Mexico is not only our long-term neighbor, uh, our history, our culture is intertwined. Uh, they're our number one trading partner. General, as we were talking about earlier today, uh, we, we are married to each other, uh, literally and figuratively. And this is a country that uh, uh, very much we have their interest, they have our interest in mind, and that obviously makes it a bit of a balancing act. Uh, as we react to the increasing violence and the unrest in Mexico and work to protect our citizens. Um, when you talk about that we'd like to see that border um, more free from the standpoint of being able to do trade uh, back and forth, but at the same time having to protect our citizens, having to protect our neighbors. Uh, Texas has made a significant investment in securing our border, which for too, too long uh, was a revolving door of, uh, you want to just hold that there, Steve, if you would, rather than, thanks. Texas has made a, a, a significant investment in securing our borders, which far too long was a revolving door to those northbound drugs and contraband of, of every sort, along with the southbound weapons and cash, fugitives. Many of the guns aimed at Mexico law enforcement passed through our state, unfortunately, as did many of the dollars that uh, are funding those violent gangs. Over the past several years, our investment in boots on the ground, increased patrols in the air and on the air, uh, in the air, have made a big difference. Since operations began, Texas has seen a 52 percent drop in, in illegal alien apprehensions, reduced border crime by as much as 65 percent in key border areas. The number on the other side of, of the border is staggering. Those numbers are getting worse. And we need to continue to support our efforts there to combat this terrible scourge that's plaguing the good people of Mexico. I also encourage the critics to, to take an objective look at the big picture. I take issue with those who describe Mexico as a failed state. Failed states don't maintain Mexico's remarkable trade output or keep up the pitch battle with organized crime like they do. Last year, Mexico was the top destination for Texas exports with more than $62 billion of products heading south. At the same time, more than $143 billion in goods crossed the border in our direction. That's 43 percent of everything we imported, a 10 percent bump over the year before. So our relationship was strong. It's getting stronger. That's why we need to direct our energies into partnering with Mexico on security issues, not pointing fingers. We need to be working with Mexico to cure uh, this plague that is affecting all of us. I'm encouraged that President Calderon, uh, his willingness to commit military resources to counter the cartel's destructive uh, intentions, their increasing 
firepower, their utter disregard for life. Texas is pleased to play the anvil to the hammer of Mexico's efforts to crush these drug cartels. That's why I've called on the legislature to dedicate $135 million to our ongoing border security efforts, our growing effort to prosecute these transnational gangs that threaten communities all across the state. In short, we cannot compromise our, our, on our safety. We cannot compromise on the security uh, while ensuring a free flow of commerce with our number one trading partner and our valued neighbor. We must be ready for any contingency. And I'm confident that we're ready to handle the ongoing challenge of securing our border, which will ultimately increase the peace, the prosperity, the protection of our citizens, and help both Texas and Mexico emerge from these dark times stronger and more viable than ever before. So, Mayor, I want to say thank you for allowing us to come today. General McCafferty, again, thank you for being here with us. And um, thank you all for your great interest in finding a solution to this very vexing problem that, that faces both Mexico uh, and, and Texas.